and welcome to this edition of Calf Chat. Um, it just happened today to be out here at Arlington um, doing some work and came over to the calf operation and well and behold, we found Jennifer and Kim here working this morning hard on their summer calf trial. So I thought what a great opportunity to let these ladies kind of tell us about all the fun work they're doing this summer and the results that we'll see here in the future. So I'm an assistant professor and extension specialist in animal welfare in the Department of Dairy Science at UW-Madison and I have two master students, so Kim Reuscher and Rakia Salter, and they're running a trial this summer with two different objectives looking at pair housing of pre-weaned dairy calves. And the reason for this is because there has been a growing body of evidence in the scientific literature showing a number of benefits for pair or group housing, yeah. including increased growth performance as well as a number of animal welfare benefits. And so we know that pairing or grouping calves can lead to a lot of upside but there's still some questions about how producers can manage calves in these settings. Yep. So we have some questions to help answer how this can be done successfully in a variety of ways. So not just in a calf barn with pens or yep. pair or group pens, but also outside using calf hutches. And so what we have here is two hutches that are joined together with a shared fence. So you have two calves, they could each be in a separate hutch where they could choose to be together or they could choose to be outside. And so with Kim's study, we're really interested in how this social rearing interacts with thermal stress both in the summer and the winter. I'm looking at the thermal stress side of things. So one question that pops up is while these um, hutches are nice and they provide shade during summertime, oftentimes it can potentially make heat stress worse. This is because the sun warms it up with solar radiation, so that internal temperature of the hutch is already starting off a little bit warmer than the ambient temperature. Um, but then if a calf goes to seek the shade, so she goes inside of it, she's now producing body heat inside of that hutch, so she's now warming it up even more. So this can make the heat stress worse during summertime, but this could help in the cold times with cold stress. Um, what we don't know is if we have two calves in a hutch, um, so if we pair house calves and hutches, a previous researcher found that oftentimes these calves share the same hutch, so they tend to like to be together inside this um, confined space. And so if we have that, how is that affecting the internal temperature? Um, how is that a possibly impacting the heat stress? Um, so with that, I have my portion of the study um, where I simulate what it's like if we have zero versus one versus two calves inside the hutch during hot parts of the day. Um, and I monitor what the inside of the hutch is with um, little data loggers that monitor the heat, um, sorry, the temperature and the humidity. And then I also take calf level responses of like respiration rate, rectal temperature, things like that so I can see how it's affecting the calf and how the heat load inside the hutch is changing. On top of that, in the pair hutches, one hutch is vented um, with little vents donated by um, a company down at the bottom where they pop open. And then we also prop, prop open the back door to allow for as maximum airflow through the hutch as possible to try to get that hot air out. Um, whereas the other hutch is kind of left as what's considered standard, where there's not um, any additional vents or anything, so it's just completely solid. Um, so I'll get to see how does the modification of the hutch help with potential heat stress. So um, does having the vents help keep it cooler even if you have more calves in it? But I also get to see do calves have a preference? Um, so we know calves feel heat stress but we don't know if calves would actively seek out one type of environment over another. Um, so I'll be watching these calves with cameras 24-7 to see do they have a preference for one hutch type over another. Well, thank you, ladies, for talking nice. me through that. Um, just one quick question, mm -hmm. as you've been out here working with these calves this summer, any tips for our producers how to manage heat stress in calves? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one, I am always pushing for ventilation. Um, I don't have any analysis yet. We'll have that in a little bit. But I do see from just anecdotally walking by, the calves tend to like to be in the vented hutch, um, and that tends to kind of lower the respiration rates. Um, when I'm running my trials, the calves that go into the vented hutches tend to not be as hot. Um, from what I've seen, that's not anything actual analysis, uh, um, analyzed yet, but that's kind of what I've seen. And then also just making sure they have plenty of water, because um, when the calves come out of the hutches, they go straight for the water. Um, and so making sure that water is there, plentiful, and also cool, because especially if you have the black buckets that you put the water in, 
that water gets heated up. So there's been a few times I'll dip my hand in there and it hurts me. And so I know if it's hurting me to touch, the calves are not gonna wanna drink it. Um, so making sure you have plenty of water and nice, not hot water. Another really interesting thing Kim has noticed is when she's restricting the calves inside the hutch for a set amount of time, she then releases them to kind of reset the hutch. And so when she opens the ventilation holes in both hutches to kind of clear out the heat that's accumulated, she sees a rapid decrease in the air temperature, which just goes to show how quickly that ventilation action can work. And another thing would be, the reason we're exploring this is because we think it is a lower barrier solution for producers who are using hutches that they can install these ventilation kits. They're pretty yeah. low cost. Ideally, we'd love to see everybody provide shade in addition to the hutch. So yeah. like a shade cloth or some kind of structure or trees as you're seeing here. We recognize that that's not always practical or feasible for everybody, but if it is an option, shade would be the first line of defense to prevent that solar gain. So in an ideal world, we'd like to see shade. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, ladies, and thank you for poking around here today and taking a look at things. We're really excited to see what you guys learn and the data analysis. And We're very excited, too, because we, we've seen so many different benefits that can come for pair or social housing, but we recognize that there are potential challenges, and we want to help yes. people find solutions so that they can do it successfully. So, and thank that's you. what research is all about. Exactly. And so great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for tuning in to this edition of Calf Chat, and happy calf raising.